Welcome aboard the Janelle 379. Today we'll be doing a briefing on this beautiful vessel. This is the AC and DC panel. This boat has one 50 amp power cord coming to the back of the boat. On our left hand side right here is the AC side. You have water heater, battery charger, which I leave on, AC plugs for outlets. Over here is your cabin lights, 12 volt DC for a cigarette adapter if you want to charge your phone, fridge, auxiliary, auxiliary is actually a freezer on these Janos, water pressure, bilge pump which should always be left on auto unless there's a problem, you can switch it over to manual. Navigation instruments, deck lights, anchor light, and steaming light. And uh, over here we have the water tank gauges, battery level, fuel level. And by pushing down on this we'll turn off any alarm that's going on. Air conditioning controls. To turn on the air conditioning simply just push on that button right there. Right now it's set to heat mode. You can see it flashing and it turns on. If you wish to switch it to cool, you would hit the mode until it says cool. There. Say desired temperature by pushing down or up on this and how fast you want the fan to go by hitting this. Over here there's a switch which controls your air conditioning to the boat coming from the back of the boat, the shore power. And right here we have the radio. Should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just any questions please ask one of us and we'll help you uh, understand it better. You'll notice some cabin fans throughout the boat. They are controlled by the cabin lights. If the cabin light is in the off position, it will not work. The water pressure pump on this vessel is located on the starboard side, midship, right behind the back cushion. This particular boat has only one tank, so there is no tank switching required. Um, the big white thing there is an accumulator, so the water pump does not turn on constantly. To use the toilet, you'll notice some gray buttons right here. One has water going in, and an arrow going down. That's adding water and flushing at the same time. The bottom left hand corner just adds water. The bottom right hand corner just flushes. To take a shower on this vessel, there is a shower head right up here and it will go down the drain and overboard automatically. This vessel, you got to make sure the propane is in the on position outside in the aft, in the aft uh, locker. Secondly, you got to make sure the solenoid is in the on position. On this one, it's right next to the sink. You would push down. Oh, there we go. Just like that. Then over here, you would push, hold, and hold and turn while holding in ignite. After about five seconds, you're going to release and it's good to go. If for some reason it does not light with the igniter, there is a lighter in the silverware drawer. The refrigerator is located next to the sink and the stove, as well as your freezer. Your freezer is right, this little one right here is your freezer. This is the size of your fridge. You also have access from here. I turn on the handle, you can open this up, you got more storage. The refrigerator does have a drain. It's a slow drain, but it works. It is located, it's hard to see, way back there under the freezer. There's also a plug you can put in there if you wish to keep water in there. To close the fridge, there is a trick to it. Right here, you have to pull out to close the lid. If you don't pull out, the fridge door could break. The refrigerator is 12 volt operated. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem running it overnight while you sleep. But first thing in the morning, you just turn on your engine just to charge them back up. Alright, seat cock and locations for the sink. Like I showed you the video earlier for tank switching, but this one only has one tank, so there's no need to change. It is located next to the hot water tank. Right back here. There it is. It is open currently. And that goes behind this wall to the sink. And sink. If you open up the door underneath, you'll see it right there. 
and it's in the open position as well currently. In the aft starboard cabin, if you were to sit down on the bed and close the door, right here you'll see this. You lift this out, put it aside. Here you have your strainer. To undo the strainer, you unscrew this cap. You take out this white area, you clean it, and then put it back in nicely and close it. But before doing that, make sure you close the through hole fitting. It's really hard to see on this build. That's why I got the flashlight on. Back under here, You'll notice, let's see here, right here is the through hole fitting. It's a little different than what you're used to, but it's this right here. Here we have the Yammer engine under the stairs. Once you lift it up, this is what you see. Uh, right now we're just going to check the oil. So I'm going to climb in there. First thing I'm going to do is pull the dipstick with a paper towel, clean it very well. Try not to make a mess. Clean up after yourselves, please. Okay. Here we have two lines or two circles, one here and one here. You want it somewhere in between. That's the perfect area. That's low, that's too full. So now I'm going to stick it back in, push the plunger in, pull out the dipstick, watch out for the drips, and it is right on the money. The oil will be black since it is a diesel, that's pretty common. So that's it. To change out the impeller, you would unscrew these screws here, take out the rubber impeller, throw a new one in, and then you put this cover back on as if you were changing a tire. In the aft starboard cabin, you may see this near the bed. No need to touch any of this except where you see that yellow switch. That is your windlass breaker. If for any reason your windlass does not operate, it's probably because of this breaker that popped. For the vessel, you'll find a white binder. In the back of the binder, you see your uh, documentation, registration, and so on. You'll also see a downtown guide right here. And then we have our customized charts for the area. Orange means shallow, and we will walk you through this when you board the vessel. On the port side of the boat, you'll notice there's a medical kit. If you open up the door here, you got wooden plugs and flares. Next one right here, air horn. Make sure you don't open this one and this one at the same time because they will hit. Here you have flashlights, another type of flare. Take the same area as the uh, medical kit and flares and so on under the seat. You'll notice there's a toolkit, and underneath that one over here would be uh, extra parts like impellers and so on. VHF procedures. First you have to turn on the nav, the nav instruments like we talked about earlier. Then here you push the power button to the on. It loads up right there, takes you to channel 16. If you wish to hear the weather, WX right here it says. Waters from Englewood to Tarpon Springs out 20 nautical. Go back to 16 right there. 16 is the main hailing frequency. Then you should switch to a different channel. Bridges monitor channel 9. Okay, now we work on the outside of the boat. Uh, this is your GPS. It's a BNG. After you turn the power on by hitting this button right here, it'll bring you up to the screen. It says, not used for bombing, missile launching, etc., etc. It's got to accept it. And here's your charts. Um, you can zoom out, zoom in, just like this. So there we go. Oh, no. So there we got our location. It does have AIS, so you see other vessels there. Oh, you have your autopilot controls right here. To engage the autopilot, you would hit auto. It takes over. Do not try to turn the wheel at this time. It is now locked to that heading. To, to take control over the boat again, hit standby, and the wheel is now yours. Right here, you have a steering lock. Make sure the steering lock is loose while you're using the autopilot. The opposite side of the boat, you'll notice this right here. Gives you the depth and boat speed. You can scroll through different settings by hitting this button right here on both sides. Here you got a winch for your jib sheets. There and there. Get your controls right there, which we'll talk about next. 
See, but this is uh, where you turn on and off your engine. To turn on the engine, you gotta turn on the power. Just turn on the power, the top one up here, it turns on the engine. I do hear water going over the side. Your shifter's right here, forward, neutral, reverse, neutral. To disengage the transmission, push in on the red button. And she just revs up, she doesn't go anywhere. The minute you put it back in neutral, the red button pops out. It will go into gear if you put it in forward or reverse. To shut down the engine, there is a stop button here. Hard to see, but it's right here. And then there's an on and off. Locker. You have to make sure the engine is in the on position. Over here on the side, you have these controls. Down, up. Do not over tighten the chain. It's not good for the boat. Okay, if you walk down the side of the boat on the port side, you'll notice some of these guys. You use the winch handle. That one says water. If you walk further back, this one says waste. On the opposite side, starboard side, aft corner, is your diesel fill. Right there, make sure it's diesel, not gas. Again, you can use a winch handle to unlock these. To bring in and out the sail, you will have to use this little guy right here. Right here it says ratchet, and here it says free. To let the sail out, you have to pull up on this and slide over to free. Then you can control it in the back. Once you have the sail out, have someone run up here and put it back on a ratchet. It'll work like a winch and uh, it'll sail would just come in and that's the way you read. If an emergency happens, the line breaks, you can put a winch handle in here and you can crank it in. The best way is have the wind 10 degrees off your stubborn bow to bring in and out your mainsail. Traditionally, you would head into the wind and raise the sail, but the sail is already up. So the best way again is to have the wind 10 degrees off your starboard bow. Okay, now we're gonna look for life jackets and uh, other stuff here. Opening up this lazarette, here we have your life jackets. If you look deeper in there, you see that handle right here. That handle is your build pump handle, which right next to it, and that's where it goes. In here you'll also find your emergency tiller with a secondary anchor. Secondary anchor is right here. Emergency tiller is this little guy right here. This guy right here. That right there would go midship of the boat right here. Use a winch handle to open. We spoke earlier at the beginning of the briefing here is your shore power cord on the port side of the boat. Go into the dock right there. Please make sure you cut the power to the dock from the dock before unplugging the boat. Up on the bow, a little bit up there, you see your bow hook. Walk through the boat. Walking towards the beaver. Nice size. Two cabins, the head and shower, engine compartment underneath the stairs that lift up on the bottom, stove, refrigerator, and sink. Well, I hope this video was informative and uh, please enjoy your sale and be safe out there. Have a wonderful day.